Okay, boss. Thank you. Sorry, I'm late as usual. <laughs> okay. So, see in such a way I can see all of your faces. <laughs> yeah. Uh, come here is a chair. Here is a seat. Uh, you can sit there also. There's one more here. Yeah. No more books. Sorry. Put put the books back. Uh, Okay, so we are reading, <coughs> we are reading uh, Bhakti Ratnavali called, it is only those who are for the new first time, it is a book on Bhagavata. Uh, uh, no. Okay. Listen, and I'll tell everything. Just I'm starting on this. <clears throat> so, oh, sorry, I'm here. Yeah, move, 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 move. Yeah, to see your faces, that's enough. Everything is okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah. come sit here. Sit here. Big class, big people have come today. <laughs> Uh, yes. Our guest has come from uh, North Carolina, two people, then our uh, four people, uh, one have come from San Diego now, from Canada, I can say Canada, uh, so uh, two people came from New Jersey, uh, and you are from where? Chicago where? Canyon. No. Nah. Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. Right, you are local. <laughs> yeah, you were here a couple of weeks ago. Oh, it's there. Oh, that's that's that's. Nice. Mm. Okay, so we are reading this book. That is in the part of Bhagavata. Bhagavata is the holy text where Krishna's life and teachings have been mentioned. One of the treasure of Bhakti school of uh, Bhakti school of. It, you can take this book. She cannot read. So you can. Yeah. So this uh, is praising about the Lord's name. The Bhakti devotional school teaches us that the holy name of the Lord is so powerful that it can purify the mind. Ramakrishna said the if one can take the name of the Lord with utmost devotion, that accrues so much of holiness and purity that even a person has no power to do commit so much sin. But that one sincere uttering of the Lord's name should be from the whole heart and soul be poured into it. Not saying um, Rama, 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 not like that. Eh? <laughs> it is superficial. But it should be so deep and profound that it will transform your life eh? with tears. Yeah. Tears should come. How many people have a tears in eyes when they call the name of the Lord? Huh? Sharaji did. Eh? Sharaji did. Sharaji. Mokshita. Mokshita. Yeah, she healed. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, that, they're, like that. they're the rare people in the world. Ramakrishna said everyone cries for the world and worldliness. Who cries for God? Who is there? Yeah. 
so that is very rare only when the heart is pure then then only that uh, sincere and that purity will purify the mind so it is glorification of the name of the lord so <coughs> prahlado you know prahlado was the uh, born in a family of you know what is called worldly minded person very worldly minded person they say called that they are called the uh, raksha so or they whatever they say uh, uh, so even born in that family he had his love for god so much uh, that he excelled that's why god appeared to please appeared before him so he says the 39 verse we read on page 188 so that verse said that this prahlada is illustrating the above doctrine by his own example what he says says thus therefore tasma the hung bigata biklava do i am born in a sinful line that means his parents his family members are so much world and worldly minded and they don't believe in god non believer but even being born there i adore the lord without any doubt or hesitation by whole hearted praise of his divine majesty and greatness but i cannot do fully so according to my capacity and understanding that's the point you need not compare oh my devotion is less than the other person you need not you do your best you bring out the best of your emotions and devotion to god and with that is enough in the gita it is said that if anyone gives me ha uh, patram pushpam phalam toya even someone gives me a leaf uh, one leaf a one flower or little water but they give it with devotion and earnestness and love offer it to me i shall accept that and they will be redeemed so this is the problem here is the problem how to be sincere how to be earnest and how to really say with our insincere craving of the heart for such praise purifies a man even if he be entangled in worldly life so it is a great hope that we are many times entangled in different responsibilities of life uh, we cannot give our attention to god uh, as some highly spiritual soul should give but don't compare don't look at that side you do ap- according to your capacity you give us your love and adoration and say oh lord i am helpless i have not the power to call upon you you be gracious if one sincerely confess this then god's grace redeems us so for such praise that purifies a person even if he be entangled in worldly life that which maya the lord's mysterious power has created eh? this world is vedanta only not only says maya but bhakti school also say maya maya ka covers the face of the lord so maya do is god's power it is the maya maya for us but it is the power of god no maya means it deludes us we are deluded in the world and worldliness we are attracted to the world why because we think this is this can give me peace joy but those who are not deluded they don't pay attention they try to get out of it that's why at the beginning stage they give up that's why the monastic life people give up their home and be a wandering monk no even you see those in household life when they get really some experience of the unworthiness of this world they become dispassionate about the world no uh, you get a good blow from your beloved friend or you have bereavement or something it gives a very clear picture of the world in which we live and when it is not that we are deluded we think ha 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 this is good no 
singing, dancing, eating and this and that and that too. Life will go on like that. Every young man, how he spends his time. Hmm? That, they, that is the way they like because that gives them instant. They don't have any other further thinking. But when life blows and uh, knocks and blows comes, then the question, why, 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 why? That awakening is in one way, they, they remove the veil as it were. Little veil of their mind is removed. And that's the Maya. So Maya is a power of God. He has cast a spell upon us. As like mother. Mothers are cast a spell upon the children. Why? Hey, give a toy here. A baby was wanted to go to mom. But mom has some business. So she gives some toys to one baby. If you have two, three children maybe in the home. So according to their age and liking, mother supplies all these things. That's the mother's maya. But when the child... <laughs> When the child, when the child will be disgusted, <laughs> playing sometimes, and they say no, no, then throw away, then the, the baby start crying. Then what will happen? Then mom comes and takes. Eh? So it is mother's power, uh, veiling power in Vedantic term, veiling power and projecting power. So mother gives some toys. So he forgot veil. Veil is mother's thought, mother's love forgotten. And love for the toys come. And a good, good total energy goes to the toys. And when the toys become the life men. And after some time when toys do not give joy, then the same baby <laughs> throw them away. That's a cry. That's why babies cry, no? So we, we should cry like babies one time. Ma, enough, enough, enough. Please, please, help me, help me, no? And that is the turning point comes, eh? and there comes the God's grace comes in. And 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 <clears throat> Prahlado is telling himself, see, I am born in such an environment, in such a family, where there is no tradition of calling upon God, and my father does not like it. Eh? Calling upon God is a sin, as it were. Eh? He appointed a teacher so that I forget God. I mean, Prahlado. Prolado was uh, given a teacher so that teacher teaches him the teach that there is no God. I am the God, Lord. Eh? His father is the Lord because he was the king. So, but it cannot, could not change the mind of Prolado. So, that's why he said, being born in that environment, I am forced to live in this situation, but still his grace, uh, uh, the you, I do according to my care, capacity, whatever I have done, wholehearted praise I give and as a, that has purified me. So for such praise, will purify. So here is a instruction for us. We should pray with earnestness, pray with wholehearted mercy. Not that I will be so much devoted like Ramakrishna is to cry, no? He is to rub his face on the sandy bed. You cannot expect that type of uh, cry will come for us. Even well, whatever the best sincere prayer and sincere uh, disgust for asking for the grace of God, that is purifying. Prolado states another. Go down. <coughs> Prolado states how the above mentioned devotional discipline of listening, hearing and praising takes a man to spiritual perfection. Another explanation is given. What he says on page uh, 189, top, O Lord, I shall easily get over all obstacles and get released from the hold of the qualities of Prakriti, the material nature, by taking to the recital of the glorious accounts emanating from Brahman and the exalted sages regarding the sportive manifestation of thine, the friend, the doer, dear one, and the Supreme Lord of all, and by associating myself with the swans, the Paramahamsas, having their abode at the lotus of thy feet. So he's saying, is a how by listening the glories, how it will come, this love for God will generate by again and again listening the holy name, 
listening the glories of God. See, now it is modern thing, you cannot read this Bhagavad too much. You can read Ramakrishna's gospel. You can read the Holy Mother's life, Holy Mother's gospel. And if you can think of that in modern age, eh, it is a similar. It's an old uh, time it was written in Sanskrit. And modern time it can be written in the English, no? Or in Bengali. So those who can read whatever. So the, he's saying that I shall easily get over all obstacles. What is the obstacles in life? Lust, greed, uh, distraction, uh, digress, digression from higher life, temptation for the lower life. So these obstacles, and I shall easily get over all obstacles and get released from the hold of the qualities of Prakriti, the three Prakriti. We are all bound by Prakriti. Prakriti has 24 principles. That means three gunas. You can say Prakriti has the meaning of 24 principles or three gunas. 24 principles, what are the 24 principles? You can say. Five uh, karmandriyo. Five, five sense organs of perception. Five, uh, five organs of Pana. action. And feet, etc. Five, five, ten, five pranas and five elements. They okay? air, water, fire, etc. This is twenty. And then mind, intellect, ego, memory, or mohat. Anyhow, these are the four. So these are all the humanistic characters. You see, that has put me down into the body level. Your eyes, ears, and this and that all are keeping myself engaged into the world. So I am under the, uh, the quality uh, and from the hold of the qualities of qualities of the prakriti. This prakriti, prakriti of your mind. If your mind is rajasic, yeah, if it is tamasic, or it is sattic. Sattva, the good quality, transparent quality. It will show you the truth, guide you in the right position. And if it is rajasic, it will take us to action. Tamasic, dullness, callousness, meanness, unkindness, brutality. Those are the characters. So these qualities have been imposed upon me as it were. I am bound. The slave soul is here pure, but is encased into this 24 principles, prakriti. So the, the, all the qualities from the this hold of the prakriti upon me, I can get out. Got the point? I am the soul which is pure inside. Isn't it? Purusha. Purusha, definition of Purusha according to Sankha philosophy, it is unborn, it is eternal, like Brahman. But that Purusha and prakriti has been come in contact. And as a result, Purusha forgets his consciousness and Prakriti is running according to the dancing of the Prakriti. That means, as your mind dictates, as your hand dictated by mind functions, all our actions are rotating around this. So, we are in the clutches of the Prakriti. But I am free. So, you can get out of the Prakriti, bond of Prakriti, then you become free. You become the self that conscious. So, how how I shall do that? By taking to the recital. This is the point. Recite, and that's why Japa, Japa. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. It's like the different <coughs> giant mantras are there. You have your Ishta mantra. Guru has given you mantra. You repeat that mantra. Huh? Or if you are really thinking of Krishna, Krishna name. You are a mother's devotee, take the mother's name. So recital of the glorious accounts also. You, you are a Krishna Bhakta to think about the glories of Krishna, his his incidents of life, how he acted in the childhood, how he was uh, uplifting uh, the gopis into spiritual ecstasy. Like that, that type of uh, we can we can think of gospel. Huh? We can think of gospel and you can read Ramakrishna sitting in the Dakshineshwar in his small bed eh? and 
so many devotees are sitting on the floor and then Naren came and Ramakrishna said, hey, why not you sing a song? And suddenly Swami Vivekananda took the Tanpura the stringed instrument and started singing some song. And Sri Ramakrishna singing that song is going to ecstasy and totally unconscious of the body. Huh? But the whole beaming joy and the description in the gospel. Think that is the way your mind gets saturated with the thought of God. Yeah? So the recital of the glorious accounts emanating from Brahma. Brahma means here is the pray. This, this praise has been done by Brahma in the previous verses. Brahma was Brahma the, creator. Uh, Brahma the creator. He was praising the glory of this uh, Krishna. And the exalted sages, uh, sages and saints, they praise the glory of God. Rama's glory. Uh, Krishna's glory, they are sung by the holy people. So you have to take those accounts and and also regarding the sportive manifestation in a, in a sport like a play, what Krishna played in his childhood, all his whole life story, in Ramakrishna's life, from the childhood you can think, oh he is sitting in meditation from the early childhood going into the cremation ground while he was a child, small boy. Uh, the wandering monks are coming for a pilgrimage to um, Ganga Sagar, Bay of Bengal. There is a holy pilgrimage. And say, many monks used to come from uh, different parts of India. And Ramakrishna, the small boy, was very friendly with the sadhus. Uh, he is going with them. And helping them, he used to in that child. Nobody taught him. He is bringing water for the sadhus, uh, helping some, bringing some firewood for the sadhus. So, and and sadhus are very happy with this boy, and he's talking about some something spiritual when they are discussing. He's listening to that. You can imagine a boy, Ramakrishna. Uh, so these are the divine sport. Because it is all related to Sri Ramakrishna, who is God Himself. So by thinking on that, you can many people cannot meditate. Meditate in the form is sometimes very difficult for many. But we can meditate on this, it's called the divine sport. We can meditate on the divine sport. Uh, you can think that Holy Mother's puja is going on, Ramakrishna performing the uh, worship of Mother Sarada. Imagine Dakshineshwar room. It is the day of Kali Puja, a Kalaharini Kali Puja. Think that there is this room where there is, there is one seat made for Holy Mother, and all the puja items are already, no? Flowers, incense, and sandal paste. All you do in the temple, all are ready. Think of that story. What happened in the life of Ramakrishna? So, he, keeping your mind engaged in this type of thought, what will do? It will keep you uh, in a divine plane. And that will purify the heart. When the meaning is that as much as we think of God, so much mind will be pure. But meditation will do is much more. But if you cannot think of the static form of the Lord, you can think of moving God. Yeah, he is moving. He is chanting, he is offering flower, he is worshipping the Divine Mother, or he is singing a song, he is dancing, he is doing all these things. So that is much easier to imagine. It is first imagination, but imagination becomes a realization afterwards. Yeah, you are asking? When it comes to uh, observing divine sport and uh, positive feelings come to come start to come up uh, typically uh, falsely I try to disassociate from them especially since uh, there's the association of physical body um, and so many other things uh, that uh, probably could no if you feel body consciousness you should not feel the body you will feel their body their movement not yourself you forget yourself uh, the purpose of this is to forget the body. 
my body. I am sitting. I am meditating. If you all will go, you will as if you are like a mental cinema going on, movie, mental movie. You you are not to create. It has been happened exactly in in the time of lifetime of Ramakrishna or Holy Mother or Vivekananda came in this country. Think of that Vivekananda in Pasadena. Read the description. Some days description. He is taking a shower. He is chanting mantras and then coming down from there and Dorothy and others are playing there and Swamiji is holding their hand and dancing like this. These are all description. It has happened. Just you can think, revisit those experiences and that type of thinking can purify the mind. So <clears throat> regarding the sportive manifestation of the mind, who about you, who you are, you are the friend, you are the dear one, D capital one is o, o capital. You are the supreme lord of all. You are not an ordinary guy, but you are the lord of lords, supreme lord. And by associating myself with the swans, the Paramahamsa, <coughs> by associating with the Paramahamsa, Paramahamsa means realized souls. Ramakrishna is called Paramahamsa, you know. So, Paramahamsa means those people, that's why it is called Holy Association. Always, you know, Ramakrishna said, Holy Association is very important. Even a holy man needs Holy Association. Why? When you go and talk about God and to a holy person, His holiness itself is radiating some vibration. And when, with along with that, <coughs> When you be there, you imitate their character, imitate their uh, holiness. So that improves your own uh, spiritual life. So, Is there some other symbolism though with the swans? Because um, Vivek Nanda shows the swan in the, in the little symbol. Yeah, right. Swan is, is swan, you know, swan is a point of detachment. Swan lives in the water all the time. The no drop of water mm -hmm. sticks to his body. Mm -hmm. So we live in the world, live whatever is going on. Somebody says something, somebody reacts something. Like the swan, what he does? <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when he comes out of the water, he shakes the body like that, and all the drops go away. So see, this is the swan character. That's why we are we are to be the symbology means. That be like a swan. And wasn't it also something about the water and the milk? Like it could. Yeah, they can separate out. That's a. I, that's a. I do not know. Ramakrishna said they have some saliva-like thing in the mouth, maybe. That that is the speciality of the swan. That you give milk and water mixed together, they you can take the milk out of the water, and water will be pumped out. <laughs> but similarly, you be a swan, so that you live in this world. Unnecessary things throw away. Take the essential. Essence is God. Eh? Enjoy the God's blessings. Reject. Vedanta, Vedanta is what? Unreal, unreal. Eh? First separate out and then take what is real, accept it, absorb it, and throw away what is not. So Swan has these two aspects. Let's say Swan, Ramakrishna is called Paramahamsa. He's not ordinary swan. He's a big swan, <laughs> great swan, and we are also the monastic community of us Vedanta. We are all, all Paramahang Paramahangso category. We are in the lineage of Paramahangso. No, a son is born in the family of a uh, of a king. What do you call? Prince. He is a boy. What do you call him? Prince. <laughs> Say. Even he is not a prince, he is not a king at all, but he is called prince. So we belong to the Paramahamsa, because Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And Paramahamsa means they are the people who are above the world and worldliness. So they live in the world like a swan, no dart and dust a clue around them. They always live in the consciousness of the divine, taking the essence and rejecting what is non-essential. <coughs> now the same idea is given in another verse 41. Next, <coughs> the Sukha, see Sukha on the purifying effect of the Lord's name. 
on rituals and worship. What he said? Whatever imperfections there may be in the rituals. Suppose you are, we do perform rituals, you know? Puja we do, home of fire we do. So whatever you do, in the, you are doing the worship, there may be some failures. All the items you could not procure. Here we don't get the bell leaf. We take a bell leaf, maybe rose leaves or some substitute. So you are not using the exact thing what is needed for the worship. So those imperfections, there may be in the rituals and acts of worship in regard to the utterance of mantra also, the observance of the procedure and the choice of the place, the time, the recipient of gift, etc. All such deficiencies and defects are removed by the utterance of thy name. Eh? You do the puja, there are so many rituals to be done. From the beginning of collection of the items of fruits, where are you placing, you are putting your feet and you are putting the thakur, um, the Lord's offering item there also. These are all mistakes. But in the puja time, people do what they will do. There is small space and you have to give this, give that. You sometimes put that. So all the negative things or improper thing which has been done in performing, in the performance of the worship or the ritual, the items may be not proper. The uh, mantras chanted in most of the time you go to the Malibu temple mantra is good because they have learned Sanskrit chanting but many priests will <laughs> what they are saying we do not know and, and then when they cannot do they they will shout loud how 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 uh, that does not make any sense uh, every Sanskrit word should have a meaning but he does not know the meaning that's why he is not very good in chanting the Sanskrit words. When they do and do, and you have done mistakes then. You are not properly chanting the mantra. If you don't know the chanting the mantra, meaning will be opposite. <laughs> so, that faulty pronunciation, chanting wrong mantras, all these deficiencies will go away. At the end, if you can take the name of the Lord. That's why even in puja time every day, our pujaris will do. And at the same, uh, they take a little water here and do first. Oh, oh Lord, whatever mistakes I have done in my uttering the mantra or offering things and things, please forgive me. So for that forgiveness, I am taking your name ten times. They say Vishnu, 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 and then take water and that means all the defects are, uh, please forgive me. Uh, so forgiveness is there. So he says, all such deficiencies and defects are removed by the utterance of your name. So what it means? That God's name is so powerful. It can remove all the deficiencies of your entire worship by because you sincerely repeat the name of the Lord. So it is all repeatedly again and again they are saying to create some faith and trust in our mind. We don't take mantra as a very easy thing. Sometimes people come as, as uh, saying, that, oh, my mantra is not working. <laughs> Give some additional mantra. <laughs> some, someone came to ask for more mantra. In one mantra Guru has given to Swami Sahananda Maharaj. Somebody came and he asked, Swami, this mantra is not working. <laughs> Can you give me another mantra? <laughs> oh, no, it is not necessary another mantra. But you have not trust and faith in the mantra. If you have faith in the mantra, that mantra will work. Its power is there. Uh, so it's power of the mantra, power of the mantra is faith. Say Ravana, eh, Ra, Ravana's brother, Bibhishana, he became the king of Ceylon after the Ravana's being killed. And then there was one man, he wants to come to see Rama. 
So how will you cross the ocean? So that she, um, Ravana's brother, he said, okay, I am giving you some powerful thing eh? and gave a piece of paper, whatever, and tied in his uh, cloth and said, don't doubt, just go on, you will cross the ocean. The guy was going on, over the ocean he's walking and he was walking freely. Suddenly in the middle he thought, what is this? One simple paper, he put it in my cloth and said, tied it, let me see, what is that? He saw, only it is written Rama. Mm. Then he thought, this only one letter, what, it ha what power it has, threw away and he sank. <laughs> it is Ramakrishna said. So the faith is more important in devotional school. You have to have faith. And it is not, people say blind faith. Uh, faith has no blind and eyes. Faith is faith. You have to believe, you have to believe. But we people need not have to always go for that. Those who are very intellectual men, they need reason, reason, reason. Uh, but also reason has some foundation. Faith is there also needed. Yeah. So faith is very important. With faith, if you take the name of Lord, with love, if you take the name, then your life will be uh, all, all purified. <clears throat> Another now note, it is customary to conclude rites and ceremonies with the invocation. Whatever omissions have been caused knowingly or unknowingly, may all of them be made good and the ceremony made perfect by the utterance of the Lord name Sri Hori, Sri Vishnu Vishnu. Hmm. Another next verse, 42. Fortune, fortunate indeed were the milk made of Braja, who is saying, it is praised by the women of Mathura for Gopikas who always thought and sang of Sri Krishna and his greatness. The beauty of the the Gopo, the Gopis, these girls, coward girls, very young girls, they used to love God so much with heart and soul. So, and this, this verse is saying they are fortunate. These ladies, fortunate were the milkmaids of the brojo. They, they are not educated people. They didn't go to high school. Uh, they don't go to a college to get a PhD. But who always thought of that is the greatness of this holy. These girls of the uh, Brindavan. Brojo means Brindavan. Brojo is a short name. It is the Brindavan. So these ladies are so fortunate for who always their mind was in the thought of the Lord and they sang about Lord. The Lord with mind full of love and the throats choked with feeling. So much they get intoxicated into the name, taking the name of Lord. That means their heart is so much in love for God. So they are very, really they are fortunate. Whether they are engaged in milking or pounding, churning or rubbing, attending to the babies or cleansing the vessels. Whatever they are doing, one part of their mind is always thinking of Krishna. When Krishna will come, when Krishna will play with us. No, That was one part of their mind was engaged. Ramakrishna said, make God your toothache. Toothache. <laughs> Toothache, when it happens, you need not have to remind anybody, hey, have you a toothache? If you have toothache, no one needs any reminder. So, your love for God should be such that it will be always you feel, oh, I want him, I want to see him, I want to go to him, I want to do, that type of yearning will come. And that is a sign of spirituality, deep spirituality. When your heart will be Seeking for God, when we feel really urge for something, we run for that, isn't it not? <coughs> if it becomes, suppose you, <coughs> I am in pain, 
<clears throat> one doctor has prescribed some, some pain medication. So what will happen? Someone will say, okay, I will have to go to bring this medicine, wait, wait. But my mind will not wait. My mind will always think when the medicine is coming, when the medicine will come, when it will come. So that type of yearning. In our scripture it is said, hmm, oh yeah, Panchari, our Shankara Acharya says, eh? the, this man who is really tormented in the life struggles, eh? Sangsaro Davan Alotapu Taptam Dodhu Yamanang Duradishta Bhatai. That more that person who will realize God, that is the point. And that urge, urge or yearning should be so intense. It is said as if he is burned. Sangsaro Davan or the world and worldliness is burning. He feels a burning sensation. He cannot bear it anymore. This, this ineffi, this what you call the unreal world, this, this, this world of appearance, and which is only bringing suffering and pain and misery. When this become disgusted with this, samsaro davan alutapataptam. When dodhu yomanam duradishta bhati, his fate. He say, my fate is always bumping up on me and creating pain and suffering and trouble for me, then he should reach, run for a guru, eh? run for a teacher or run for God. They become restless for God. Restlessness for God is very rare quality. When it comes, you know that you have progressed much. Eh? When there will be some restlessness, not only God, when you are having some some talk, some discussion, some discourse going on about God, you will feel restless. I'll have to go, I'll have to go, I'll have to go. That urge, when it really comes inside, know that your mind has become purified. So he's saying that whether they were engaged in milking, whatever they are doing, the cow cows milking of the cows, or pounding, or churning, or rubbing the different chore works in the family to grind some paste in the pestle, grind some muscle or some spices, or doing any household work, simple work, rubbing or attending to the babies, their children, or cleansing the vessel, their mind was always engaged. In. So they are the blessed, they are the blessed people, fortunate, they are fortunate indeed. So, so another one or end or uh, another one <coughs> 43 <coughs> on page 190 who can forget the Lord and his deeds he is so attractive that Sri Devi never leaves him although he does not care for her in the least <laughs> yeah but then who can forget the Lord and his deeds that means Uddhava it is the Gopikas on the attractiveness of the Lord's excellence. Many, it is a pain, this pain of separation. We call, we call separation anxiety. Separation anxiety in human love, it is like spiritual love. Separation anxiety. That's called bakulata. I have not seen. Sri Chaitanya said that even for a blinking of my eyes, this how, how long it takes to blink? Split second. If I don't see you, I feel that I have not seen you for one, twelve years, as it were. He, yuga itang nimeshena. Nimesha means the blinking of the eyes. Yuga, it appears yuga means al almost ages I have not seen you. Yuga itang nimeshena, Govinda, virahena. If I don't see Govinda, the Lord, it appears to me. For a blinking of a second, it appears that I have not seen him for thousands, hundreds of years as it were. Such is the intense. It happens, no? When when you love someone and start gossiping with him or talking with him, one hour goes, two hours goes, and then suddenly, oh, two hours! 
How did the time go? Huh? Is it not? And when you love someone and have not seen for a long time, your heart will be pounding like that. Every second will appear, my God, one hour. If someone gives you the time, I will come at 5 o'clock, he loves you. And then it is late by 5 minutes. Then you become saying, oh my God, it is a whole Why are you doing huh? That means it is a question of love. So the biraho, it is called, the, in spiritual science, it is called biraho, separation anxiety. And it is separation anxiety for God. I have not seen him. I have not felt him. I have not been in touch with him. I fall, forgot him for a split second. So that is the highest. And that is the closest state for God realization. And then if, if one can have that, then done. Okay, sir. Well, what is the time? 32. 5.32. Oh, 5.32. Okay. Eh? Now time for tea. But we have so many people today. Plenty of food. Plenty of food. Plenty of But now you... Oh, ma. So you will go or stay? This was like